I started Final Fantasy at the release in 2013 August or September, I don't really remember when it was exactly right. And the game, through everything, even the smallest quest, is elevating your mood, is giving you back hope and inspire you, inspiring you to friendship, to loyalty to dedication, to hard work, to never give up, all of this, to me, it's, it's like Final Fantasy XIII is good for your soul. I am so very much into the game, very much involved with the community, and I could truly enjoy everything that Final Fantasy XIV had to offer at that point. to be a calm, relaxing gaming talk like I'm doing sometimes to allow you to relax while listening to a subject that you may be interested about. stumble upon this video by chance. The series of discussion is aimed first and foremost for your relaxation so you can fall asleep while listening to my voice talking about a subject that might interest you more than I don't know something else that is used usually for falling asleep videos not that there is anything wrong with that of course but as a fellow gamer you may want to hear more about video games and beautiful beautiful world they propose before to enter further into the video I would like to thank you my dear friend about all of your commentary and your support and the kindness Feel. It feels like we're building up a nice little community and I really want and try to build up a close relationship with you even though it's YouTube and not Twitch TV so it's a little bit different as it is not live. I would like you to know that if you let me know that you exist, I pay attention to you. If you never talk and comment, I don't know that you're here, but I give you all of my love nonetheless, of course. And you don't need to feel forced to, to show yourself if you don't want, if you prefer to stay in the shadow, you're 
welcome to stay in the shadows know that I'm appreciating you but obviously I can only build a more personal relationship with the people that are showing up themselves and uh, I try to do that at least because I think that especially with ASMR video to build up a relationship of trust and confidence is important in any case thank you so very much for your participation I started Final Fantasy at the release in 2013 August or September I don't really remember when it was exactly at that time I was in an American guild called Guild Umbra I had joined this guild to participate and prepare myself for the release of Elder Scroll Online. There were a big American guild and they had several chapters. They prepared one for the Elder Scroll Online, but also one for Wildstar, which one day I will make a video about. Let's have a little thought for Wildstar. In any case, uh, one of the members of Gildenbra were was very, very enthusiastic about Final Fantasy fourteen. His name was Benevolent or Benefactor, I'm not really sure anymore because it's a long time ago, but there was something with Bene in it which suited him very well because it was a very very nice and kind person and it really wanted to create something beautiful with Final Fantasy XIV and he was very very passionate about so passionate indeed that the guild leader and guild organizer allowed him to organize a chapter about Final Fantasy XIV and at that time I really wanted to integrate myself well in this guild and so I decided okay I'm going to join up uh, that game as well I'm not interested by the game itself not at all but I'm interested into building up relationship with my guildies and so that will help me out for Elder Scroll Online and Wildstar other was still some times before those two games where to release. So I joined at Final Fantasy fourteen and I was not convinced. I was really not convinced. At first the combat felt clunky. I didn't like the structure of the game. I was irritated by a lot of aspect uh, which is difficult to describe um, now but it's really concern the structure of the game how you have to I know that the maps and the zone were annoying me you had you didn't have this feeling of space and openness you always needed to load out to another area and I did not understand why it was built up that way and uh, it was the same thing with some game system it felt to me really weird I started in Limsalominsa with the organist because I was attracted by the fact you could cast your spell with a book and the character I choose was uh, here because all of my guildies were Mikot and I like it to stand out and I, I saw that 
there was less here that everyone else was a Mikot. I, I wanted to be a Mikot too, but the originality of what I would be was more important and prevailed over my real taste. So I did hesitate longly between here and La Lafelle and I chose a here in the end. That's what I played, here arcanist. My girl was really cute, she was very cute. But I didn't really enjoy the game. I was very frustrated by the game. And um, it took me Then, when I had the possibility of uh, moving from one city to another, I did that and I went to Gridania to become a conjurer, so I could become a healer, because that was my goal, I wanted to be an arcanist, so I could be a scholar, and so I needed to be conjurer as a second, a second uh, Thing. and um, so I did that and when I went to Gridania and I played the conjurer I really enjoyed it more there was something about Arcanist that I didn't enjoy was the spells and also when I was doing group content I could not heal I was forced to DPS which really frustrated me but once I could be a conjurer then I really enjoyed my spells a little bit more. I really enjoyed the zone more. Gridania did suit me better than Linza Lominza at that time because now I really like Linza Lominza. But at that time I didn't enjoy it. And um, it, yes my first impression of Final Fantasy were very weird because a lot of the aspects that really irked me back then are actually very charming now to me. For example, the wording in the texts, that felt like very, very um, difficult. But long story short, it's only when I moved to Gridania and I started to play as a conjurer to become a white mage that I started to enjoy Final Fantasy a little bit more. It was still not enough however to really convince me to continue the game. And so after 2-3 months I think and until I reached level 32 I believe I gave up on the game. To focus my attention entirely on Elder School Online and Wildstar. Then a lot of things happened. A lot of things happened. And for some reason I left the Gildenbra and I rebuilt, resurrected my whole community Wildstar. With the idea of playing Elder Scrolls and Wildstar together. And I put all of my intention into Elder Scrolls Online and Wildstar. But some of my friends really enjoyed Final Fantasy. And at some point, I think it was in 2015, I would say. Uh, just a little bit before the expansion Heaven's Ward, um, some of my friends created a um, chapter in Final Fantasy XIV. And suddenly there was a lot of life into that adventures. And while I was taking care of the Hell's Hollow Nine mostly, Wildstar was already abandoned. Arcage was already abandoned, so 
Elder Scroll Online and World of Warcraft are the two only active chapters beyond this new one. And people really in my community enjoyed Final Fantasy XIV a lot. And I didn't want it to play it at first, but I saw so many screenshots and so many stories and I felt like, oh my god, I'm missing out something. There's obviously something about the game that ah, they they made me want to try again. Therefore, I reopened my account. I created a new character. This time, it was a Mikote. I started immediately in Gridania with a monk, I think. Then it was not in Gridania, that was in Elda. Well, how did I do? What did I create? Then I created my Mikate. I don't remember what job I started as. But I remember that I told to myself I'm going to try different things. And I will give it a go. I will try many different jobs until level 15. So I make my decision about what I like the most. And I did that. But then again, I didn't really enjoy the class. I didn't really enjoy the combat. <laughs> the structure of the game was still bothering me. So I give up pretty fast to continue to focus on what I enjoyed most, which was Elder Scroll Online. But then again, my friend really seems to enjoy Final Fantasy XIV so much. And I knew I was missing out something, I just didn't know why, didn't know what. And so I took my character again. And I decided to give it a good go, a better go, even this time. You know the saying, third time is the charm. And it's exactly the third time that I started to see what there was beyond. What there was beyond everything that irked me in the game. Everything that was an obstacle to my enjoyment. I suddenly discovered the soul of the game. And suddenly I could feel and experience the wholesomeness of Final Fantasy XIV. It's something really bizarre to describe because it's not related to the gameplay. It has some, nothing to do with even the stories. The, the Realm Reborn stories are not that great. And the NPC characters are very annoying at first. Honestly, which one of you enjoyed Alfino or Minthilia at the very beginning? I for sure didn't. All those characters were really, really annoying at first. There was nothing to really bond, so it was not that. But there was something infused, imbued in the game that was very sweet and that I will discover and also probably the community. People were nice in that game. They were nicer than in Elder School Online, which at that time had already a beautiful community in which I was extremely involved. And certainly better community than World of Warcraft had at that time too. And so I came back to Final Fantasy for good. In the end of 2016, Final Fantasy XIV became my safe space for a moment. 
It was just after the breakup with my ex-Norwegian boyfriend, which I've been talking about in other videos, which has been a very painful and difficult breakup. And so I had to leave World of Warcraft Legion at the time, even to I was really enjoying myself into the game, but it was too intertwined with the breakup itself and too painful. Just the music of the game like Suramar music was impossible for me to listen to at a time because it was too much linked to the feeling of the ending relationships and the breakup. So Final Fantasy was a nice place where to rest, find friends, uh, find comfort and um, it did offer me what I needed at that time and then I started another relationship a few months later with a guy I've been with for two years that some of you may have known if you followed me for a long time because I've been streaming and creating videos with him for, for two years at least and uh, we created two new characters together so I had reached level 60 by then with my Mikot and I decided to delete her and to recreate a brand new character to play with him and start fresh and, and new and I created my aura and she started in Lim Salaminsa as a warrior and the goal was to become a tank uh, with her first I know to become a lancer but I started with the warrior in Lin Salominsa and I really enjoyed myself that has been the real Final Fantasy playthrough that I enjoyed all step of the way at that time I was familiar enough with everything of the game that were irritating me a lot of those system had been simplified and polished as well by the game itself and we were in the expansion heaven's sword of course i was very slow at leveling and the story of a real reborn is pretty long so i never i never catch up with the content as it was currently at that moment but so that playthrough and that adventure had been really beautiful. I level up my character as a Lancer primarily, uh, but then of course I had to create a healer job as well, so I also become a Conjurer and a White Mage. And then once I reach Heaven's Ward, I swapped to become an Astrologer. And I enjoyed Astrologer so, 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 so very much. The spells were so fun. The weapon was so cool. I enjoyed everything about Astrologer. It was really perfect. And I did truly enjoyed all of my playthrough, Arian Reborn. Um, the, the stories between a real and reborn and heaven's watch was a little bit long but it was exciting too and i really enjoyed the final um cut scenes i was really into the story at that point and i started to build up a relationship with the characters as well and then i did heaven's Sword. Uh, i really had fun I had made friends, I was in a really cool free company, uh, I was streaming Final Fantasy, I had established myself a little bit as a Final Fantasy streamer at that time. I was playing with a lot of people, organizing groups and in session where we were doing all content together, the old trials, the, the old reds, and it was really, really fun. So I did catch up on the content to finally reach Stormblood at the same time 
than everyone else or maybe one or two months after everyone else has started Storm Brood. It was not exactly when it released but very very close. That was really nice because I had been to fan fests in Frankfurt at the time so I was very much into the game, very much involved with the community and I could truly enjoy everything that Final Fantasy XIV had to offer at that point. This is really when I connected with the game and when Final Fantasy XIV became one of my favorite MMORPG. I will say that at that time, uh, even though I was streaming Elder Scrolls Online more often and creating content for Elder Scrolls Online on YouTube, uh, I was playing much more Final Fantasy XIV uh, of stream and of content. It was my holiday place um, and I truly enjoyed myself. I have extremely fond memories of that period of time. And for a while I played Final Fantasy and World of Warcraft as my main game. World of Warcraft was the main one, Final Fantasy was the side one. I'd stopped Elder Scrolls Online for a little bit, then I came back to it and I was swapping between four games for a while, like Elder Scrolls, Final Fantasy XIII, World of Warcraft, Guild Wars 2, and I played all of them. It was difficult to keep up, however, so I had to make a choice at some point. And I stopped Final Fantasy, because in between Final Fantasy XIII and World of Warcraft, I still preferred World of Warcraft's combat style and um, prefer the red atmosphere of World of Warcraft. There was also this bond with World of Warcraft that I've been explaining many times. And after two years of break and uh, the morning of my relationship done, it was possible for me to go back to World of Warcraft. So I made that choice which sometimes I regret because I think Final Fantasy XIV would have deserved my attention better <laughs> but whatever what has been done has been done I came back to the game last year in August after a long break and it was very good to come back to Final Fantasy XIV. Very, very nice. Now, let me explain you why I like the game. I've given my story with the game. Now, uh, let me tell you why I think it's a really beautiful game. First of all, and that's not the main reason why I like the game, but it's something that I find very interesting. It's the story of Final Fantasy itself, the story of the development of this game. I think that story in itself is magnificent. When you imagine that this game firstly released and had been a sort of failure, then Yoshida came to put things in order. There is a magnificent documentary, a documentary in three parts, three hours of documentary, explaining the story of Final Fantasy, its resurrection. Like a realm reborn is literally what it was. It's so beautiful. For anyone that is passionate by MMORPG or game development, that documentary is a must-see. So I will put the links below in the information so you can check it out for yourself if you are interested and if you have not seen it. But 
the long story short, what happened is that the game did release in a, a stage that were not satisfying the players or some players at least. The game was not a success. It was crippled with bug, the structure of the game was bizarre. Um, I think it was unplayable for some people as well from a technical point of view. Basically it was a failure. And uh, Naoki Yoshida came into the game to save it and he really is a hero. And I think that's why the whole community love him so much. He really came there and he did something crazy and miraculous. While he was keeping the first version of Final Fantasy XIV going on and having simple patches but still the game was running, he restarted the development of the game from the ground and in two years and a half he recreated everything. So the cool sunset, the first version of Final Fantasy XIV, was a big event, was the destruction of the world, everything was explained into the lore, and then resurrect the game was the new version that you can play today, Final Fantasy XIV, a realm reborn, with the cataclysm and the reason why that game came up again as part of the core story of the game. And the whole scenario of Final Fantasy XIV is all about that. It is absolutely magnificent. And uh, Naoki Yoshida did a fantastic job. He saved the game in two years and a half. He recreated everything. The craziness of that feat alone is worth to pay attention to the game. So that's the first reason I think that I really have a huge respect for Final Fantasy XIV. The way they treat their community with respect and kindness and a lot of passion and love you can feel it in every aspect of the game it is very beautiful but my main reason to love Final Fantasy and I've evoked it earlier in this video it's the soul of the game there's really something special about it is it because it's Japanese? Is it because the developers truly love and care about the game? I think every developer cares about the game they are working on, so it cannot be only that. But there is something about it that makes it very special. Just the way the characters speak, the way the NPCs interact with each other, the little side quests, the feeling overall that's pouring through the game there's something so beautiful it's a game that gives you hope that wants you to fight for the good cause that wants you to make friends it's a game that teaches you good value that inspires you elevated feelings I've never seen that in any other game and God no, I'm admiring the storytelling of Elder Scrolls Online, for example, and I do believe that Elder Scrolls is a fantastic game with really great artists behind it. Yet, in Final Fantasy XIII, it's truly special. There's something more, something more inspiring, something that elevates your mood more and Which is why I say it's the soul of the game, because I cannot find any better words for it. Now the scenario is fantastic. Do you imagine that the 
scenario of the game has been planned for 10 years. It is not like World of Warcraft where they are putting an expansion after another and inventing the lore as they go with it and sometimes contradicting themselves. Or Elder Scrolls Online which has plenty of really really good stories but they are all a little bit separated from each other and they, they are very different. The, the storytelling of Elder Scrolls is very particular and I will talk about that another time. But it's not the same than Final Fantasy. Here you really have a structured story that starts with a Rim Report and every time you arrive at a point into the plot where you start to understand really deep stuff about before and yet you still don't have, you have hint about the future but you cannot guess what's going to happen before it actually happened and as I'm approaching the end of the game and Walker is the end of the story I'm starting to understand more and more and getting more and more the depth of what the story is about what's really interests me and intrigued me very much and that's very personal it's how you have deep metaphysical inspiration into Final Fantasy XIV. That's probably because it's a Japanese game, and um, I'm kind of getting along nicely with the some Asian philosophies like Hinduism and Buddhism, and there's notion like reincarnation and different plan and and. and that, that kind of metaphysical thinking is part of my belief system and therefore I recognize that uh, in a much stronger way into the fantasy of Final Fantasy and this type of plots than I would in a classical western uh, fantasy probably uh, because it's aligned more with my own perception of what's the metaphysics are but that's something that really really excites me in the plot of Final Fantasy XIV is how close the scenario of Final Fantasy is to the scenario of what's happening in our real world according to my belief system and my point of view like the transformation of the age of uh, Aquarius and how humankind is called for um, ascending and elevating itself and you have the light workers that are helping out to uplift the general vibes of humanity and we're cleansing all of all trauma etc and through incarnation and incarnation and incarnation we're ending the cycle all of that stuff which i believe in in a real world you have it illustrated very strongly in final fantasy 14 and to me it's like uh, the storytellers of Final Fantasy on the subconscious level or on the soul level have all those information and are pouring it into the game, giving the players the occasion of awakening to those type of notion. And <laughs> all right, I'm going into a very big metaphysical rant here, but I have this feeling that Final Fantasy XIV story something to teach you as a human it's it's really doing its job of light bringer and the fact that the players are called the warrior of light of course it has a reason in the plot itself but beyond that reason you're a warrior of light you are aimed to elevate humankind and the game through everything even the smallest quest is elevating your mood is giving you back hope and inspire you 
inspiring you to friendship, to loyalty, to dedication, to hard work, to never give up. All of this, to me, it's it's like Final Fantasy XIII is good for your soul. Make your children play that game. Tell your friend to play that game. It is good for your soul and it's good for humankind. Play Final Fantasy XIV. Even a little bit. <laughs> so, I think that's the main reason why I love the game. It's like I have a spiritual respect for this game. I do believe it's a good game. I do believe it's quality content that will make you a better person if you play it. I think Final Fantasy XIV make you a better person. That's my my feelings towards the game and the main reason why I love it. It could have been surprised in such a small sentence yet I had to talk about but I hope you get my message and I hope it was interesting. Now you have other reasons that are more superficial, but I think it's a gorgeous game. The characters are really beautiful. Every details are put into the characters. That's also something that I think make you a better person because it's foster a nice community. The fact that your character can smile, express feelings, hug players, um, it, it inspires you goodness, it inspires you to be kind with others, it inspires you to, yes, create a bond with your character, because you can see it smiling, and making faces, and expressing emotion, you can truly create this connection, uh, this feeling with your character. That's a very important part of a video game. And beyond the connection you create with your character, there's a connection you create with the NPC character, or the main hero of the story. That's also something very unique and proper to Final Fantasy XIII that you find in no other MMORPG. You are building slowly your relationships with the NPC. It's not fast. It takes years. It takes many expansions. So it's the relationship you're building up, for example, with Alfino, to speak about him in particular because it's very annoying at first. It takes 10 years. 10 years of your life you're building up a relationship with an NPC if you have been playing the game from the beginning up to the end it takes 10 years of your life to start to like Alfino or maybe you like him after 2 years but you get my point that means that you have the time to develop this relationship, you have the time to see this relationship evolving as it will have happened in real life. This is something very important because relationship is something that takes time. Sometimes it can happen very fast, but to have a very deep connection, it takes time. It needs the time to flourish and evolve within you. And that's what Final Fantasy XIII gives you as an opportunity and they do it in a very smart way because at first to take the example of Alfino still it, it's an annoying character most people will not like Alfino at first uh, at first you want to give him some slap in the face but then over time in the stories and in the plot his character will evolve and flourish he will grow and the relationship you're building will grow as well together and that makes it very interesting with everything you have been through together every things you have endured together every battle you have fought together obviously you will create a friendship 
even if you don't like the character itself even if you don't like his personality and even if after the years you still don't like its personality yet the relationship had been built up like you will imagine in real life you have a colleague or someone in your life that you don't really like at first that has personally trade you disapprove but you have been through so much shit together you had been forced to kind of cooperate together for so long that even to you didn't like each other and you would not like each other because you don't fit with your personality trait or your taste or whatever but you have created a relationship you have been battling together and therefore there is something created between you and I think that's also part of the magnificence of Final Fantasy XIII is the way you create a relationship over time with the character it's the only game that does that to that level you have it a little bit in Guild Wars 2 a very little bit in Elder Scroll Online it's different, it's not the same in Final Fantasy it's very deep they also have auto cinematic where you see your character expressing emotion and when you see the NPCs expressing emotion you have very deep discussion sometimes where they reveal very deep stuff about themselves that's probably a very Japanese thing to do <laughs> but you have that in anime as well in any case, it really gives something very special about the game. So, I've not been speaking so much about the gameplay element. Um, this, for obvious reason, I kind of like Final Fantasy for pure gameplay things. I like the season 11 they propose. I think it's fun, the collectible that you can uh, find and collect. Um, the combat is well done and polished, the animation are really beautiful. I still prefer World of Warcraft combat in that style of uh, game. I think that World of Warcraft is more fluid and allow you more freedom. Final Fantasy is very much you have to learn to dance. Uh, and some, some, some jobs are very complex, some jobs I'm not playing because they are too complex but it's also one of the remaining game that proposed this World of Warcraft-esque type of progression most of other games are either not popular enough or they have swapped over time so if you want a real PvE progression type of MMORPG Final Fantasy XIV will be your second choice after World of Warcraft unless you really don't like World of Warcraft for various reasons then Final Fantasy is the best game um, well you can discuss about that which one of those two is better but in any case that's the two only big MMORPG that propose you this uh, vertical progression type of endgame and uh, it's well done, it's well polished, it's well thought on various level. So for that, it's also nice. This is something I would like to explore more because I cannot play World of Warcraft the way I want to play it. And I don't think I will ever go back to it anyway. So Final Fantasy is my kind of last chance of having some PV end game experience. Oh. With that type of combat, I know you could do that in Elder Scrolls or Guild Wars 2, but they have a different type of combat. And I like the top target system for some games. <laughs> for that type of content at least, I prefer the action face-based type of combat that Elder Scrolls or Guild Wars 2 propose. It's not, it's not the same. In any case, that was a very, very, very long discussion about Final Fantasy XIV. So, at the moment, I have just finished Shadowbringer. 
I know, and that's what I was supposed to speak about, specifically about Shadowbringer. But I guess that would be for another video, right? Because now I think my friend is time to fall asleep. If you have any question about what are my favorite NPCs or my favorite plot, feel free to ask that. I will be happy to answer. And I would be curious to hear about your experience with the game itself and how much you agree or disagree with me. In any case, I think that no matter how busy I am and how much I have plenty, plenty a very great game to play. Final Fantasy XIV is one of my favorite. I had an amazing experience with it and I'm sure I can continue to have one. The story of Shadowbringer was fantastic. I'm going to tell you that. never been watching my stereo video I say more morning in Final Fantasy 14 I warmly recommend you to do so I'm having a lot of fun with that series it's a really nice episode to create and I hope you guys enjoy them you can also find me live during the months of May I play Final Fantasy XIV every Wednesday and Thursday. In June it's going to change, so take your chance now when it's time. It would be fun to say hi. <laughs>